Peter Thayer. I'm the head of school at Radcliffe Creek, and I'm in my second year of a three-year role in that position, uh, and uh, just loving my time at, at this school and this community. Um, and when we got here, coming off of the pandemic and COVID and all that, um, we came to realize just how important it was for us to be able to be outdoors with kids and for our kids, uh, as the majority of our kids are neurodivergent learners of some kind, um, being outside really makes a difference. So um, we applied last year for the what we call No Child Left Indoors. We applied to the Robert F. Schumann Foundation and they very generously uh, embraced the initiative and have helped us to make it happen. Uh, and we're excited to, uh, um, to be a, actually asking for the second year from them. Uh, and it's gone very well. We've got some great people who've been helping to coordinate the activities of our kids. And you can just see it in the faces of the children when they come back from a field trip or an out outdoor adventure of any kind just how transformative that experience can be for them. There's, there's science behind uh, what it does for the brain of kids uh, to be able to be engaged in and close to uh, the earth and the environment. You know, I think uh, you see it when our kids, uh, when they went to the, the beach at Cape Henlopen and they gathered at a sunrise, you know, and to see what that was like and to witness it from the ocean and, or when they held hands and ran into the water, you know. Those kinds of things are, uh, you know, bonding experiences emotionally for the kids, but also, I think, uh, helping them to kind of figure out more about who they are and where they fit into the, the world. Um, and as we face climate crisis and, you know, horrible weather and other kinds of issues throughout the last 5, 10, 15 years, um, it's great for, for the young folks to be able to start to understand about they have an impact on their environment and the environment has an impact on them. Pretty much all youth today, I guess, are engaged in the, the digital world far more than they are with the natural world and that's a, uh, a troublesome thing. Um, you know, the research out there, this guy Richard Liu who wrote the book, The Last Child in the Woods, talks about um, how some of the problems for our youth today come back to the fact that they are not out outside enough, uh, that they are too engaged with screen time. And as you just indicated, it's something that really can help uh, isolate kids. Um, you know, they think they're connected because they're playing a game with somebody in another country or another state, but they're really feeling pretty lonely doing that too. Yeah. It's not healthy. It's actually one of the blessings, if there is such a thing from the, from the pandemic, is that a lot of schools had to be outdoors with kids more because it was not safe to be inside. And a lot of teachers that I've been around in other schools and here uh, have found that they actually ch have changed the way they approach um, the, you know, their classes because of uh, the, the, the need to be outside um, to make it work. And some schools had that luxury that they could just go outside into their woods. Uh, not all schools can do that. Well, first, I mean, I'm, we're really grateful for the folks who've, who've helped us get to this point. You know, the Schumann, Robert F. Schumann Foundation was uh, instrumental in making this happen. We built an outdoor classroom uh, that was fundraised for during the pandemic, um, and that was built by parents in the past year. Um, other partners that are helping us with the landscaping project for that out activity, um, the nature trail that we're hoping to expand, um, all those things come from faithful people who are you know, stepping up to the plate to help us out, and um, we're just really grateful for that. Um, I guess the other piece that we hope will come out of this is a, as a school, we've, we have been a green school in the past by designation by the, uh, the Maryland um, Outdoor Education Group, um, and we would like to, to uh, reestablish that, uh, and that's, um, that takes some work on our end, um, and we fell off on our paperwork a little bit in between when we were last uh, certified, it was in 2018. So we hope to get back to that with some of the work that's going on right now. And I'm thinking like Shore Rivers is helping us with the landscaping project, they're, they're consulting with this. It's become a math project for our kids because we're all about hands-on, multi-sensory learning, and so the kids are out there measuring the space, figuring out what plants take what size, uh, 
diameter holes, what, which ones go well together. So all of that, I think, is um, kind of part of our broader curriculum, which is kind of cool. Yes, the, maybe one of our other teachers may have spoken of this to you earlier, um, but we're taking the eighth graders and seventh graders and actually one sixth grader, our oldest uh, two homerooms, are going down to the uh, Port Isabel uh, for three days and two nights at a Chesapeake Bay Foundation um, pro program that should be you know, really fascinating for them. Learning about both the science and the culture of life on the Eastern Shore. Um, so my name is Simone Magnoni and I've been at Radcliffe for three years now and I am the department head of Discovery, and I teach 7th and 8th grade and 3rd and 4th grade Discovery. Um, yeah, so for the 7th and 8th graders, it's a little different because we're looking to help them transition um, into high school. So we're, in my Discovery classes, it's a healthy mix of um, like prepping them with like quizzes and note-taking skills and other study skills, and then still incorporating our hands-on um, learning motto and activity to kind of meet the kids where they're at with their learning skills. You have to be super dynamic, and if you cannot be dynamic, that, I think that's the biggest challenge, but I think that's what's so unique about this place. All of the teachers here have that like ability to adapt to each kid on the fly in class to help them um, where they are because, you know, one student might need help with um, organizing um, and organizational skills, and then another student might need help with, um, you know, staying on task or focused, and you have to be able to accommodate both of them, like, in that class period, you know. Yeah. And, like, that's what we do great here is, like, teachers regularly, regularly meet um, on students to implement plans to help them in the classroom, you know. And I know we have smaller class sizes, um, which is also super beneficial to all of the kids. It is, it's just so rewarding seeing the kids um, be able to, like, move toward that independence, which is what our ultimate goal is, right? Um, to help them be more independent and taking care of their materials or being independent with their academics. Um, and I think what's kind of cool being a teacher of um, the younger kids and the older kids, like watching them progress from third, fourth grade all the way to, you know, seventh and eighth grade. And then, um, you know, graduation is always <laughs> a tearjerker because you, you just know and trust that they're gonna do such great things moving on to the next place. They applied for this grant around this time last year and we were um, told, I think back in June, that we got the money to do it and it was super exciting. Um, I know Amanda and I were both really excited to plan and put together these trips because, um, you know, just being able to provide the students with these experiences at no cost to them um, is incredible, you know? Whereas maybe previously it would have cost a little bit of something, but um, I don't know. The Being able to get them out into nature and understanding um, how we can have a good impact on nature and then on top of it too, um, also helping like further enhance the education that they're in, learning in class and being like, wow, you know, we went to seventh and eighth graders went to Gettysburg National Park and they were like, oh man, like it's all coming together pretty much, right? Like just having them see and having that impact on them outside of the classroom is really cool. Uh, my name is Amanda Stubbs. I've been working here for two years. Well, this is my second year. And I am a discovery teacher and also the No Child Left Indoors coordinator. Settings, I've been teaching for about 12 years. Um, I worked in a Montessori school for about four years. And then after that, I started working at a public school right here in Kent County, the high school. And then I started working at Radcliffe right after that. <laughs> um, I teach fifth and sixth grade, so it's kind of mixed in. Um, basically, we have 10 to 12 year olds. 
Um, we do discovery, so it's social studies and science topics. Um, we switch off every six weeks um, between the two subjects. Um, a typical day can look like making things from hands. Um, the other day, for instance, we made blood slime because we're working on our human body unit. Um, today, we also made a model of lungs. So lots of hands-on stuff, lots of like multi-sensory things. We like to go outdoors and bring movement and stuff like that into our lessons so that, you know, the kids are getting it from all angles. So, um, I actually took our, and some other teachers, we took our fifth and sixth graders on a camping trip to Cape Henlopen State Park. Um, so it was a one night, we slept in tents. It was a, a first experience for a lot of the kids in many different ways from, you know, being away from home to spending the night somewhere new, pitching tents, setting up the campsite, organizing things. Um, it was actually a really great experience and even this happened last year in um i think it was around october november and it's now february and i still have kids asking like when are we going to go on the next camping trip so it was a really great experience you know kids who struggle with you know being introverted and shy i mean i saw them grow um they became super independent and it was nice to see the relationships between the kids grow too in a different way than you can kind of get in a school environment. Just getting outside is so beneficial in you know, so many different ways for especially our neurodivergent kids. You know, it helps with you know, their physical, mental well-being and also with their development. So, And it's nice to see them in a different light when we get outside and they're faced with different challenges than they would be you know, inside the school buildings. It's all about connection, you know, connection with each other and connection with the you know, outdoor environment and just, you know, learning not only about nature, but about each other and, you know, coming together. And it's really nice to see the kids just kind of grow in so many different ways when they're outside that you don't get to see on a normal day. Um, so right now I am working on with Camp Takwa to plan another overnight with our fifth and sixth graders. I do the younger guys, so I do fifth and below, which is like fifth through first grade. Right. Um, so that's what our fifth and sixth graders do. We just had our um, first through third graders go out to Red Acres um, Farm. So they got to experience, you know, local and sustainable farming practices. Um, and we also are planning a trip for our third and fourth graders where they're going to go um, to Seabeck, which is out on Ken Island, and they're going to be doing some um, ecology things out there. So, so we try to make it not only nature-based, but we also like to incorporate like, all of our curricula in to the experiences, whether it's math, science, social studies, whatever. They're even reading and writing we like to incorporate into the program so that we're hitting not only what they're learning in school, so it might be a topic, but they're also getting outside and getting to be good stewards.